ダイス Hi, my name is Rob Strong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Show. I'm working on something. I wasn't sure if you'd be interested in seeing it or not,、um, but I thought, why don't I film it and you can see what I'm up to? So, you may be aware that I've made these cartridges for the Atari ST, and basically, they are Uh, diagnostic cartridges, or to be honest, multi use cartridges.、Uh, Chrissy's put Buggy Boy on his. He's actually populated all four banks、uh, and u s e it that way.、Um, but as default, I figured it'd be nice to send them out with some diagnostic ROM. So hence, there's STE and ST versions and TT, different versions you can choose.、Um, but I'm putting these aside for now because I want to show you this other thing here. So, what I've done,、um, I've worked on、uh, something over the weekend just for a bit of fun because I've always wanted an ultimate. Ripper, so that I could do some、uh, ripping and messing around like that when I'm playing with games and stuff, and see if I can bring some graphics in from you know cannon fodder or something. And it's very easy to modify your、uh, <laughs> super mega cart I don't know why I call it that super mega cart to be able to to take an ultimate ripper、uh, because effectively what you need is a, a stealth mode. Oh. Sorry, that was my phones and everything going off. You need、uh, a stealth mode, and basically, the stealth mode allows you to turn off these banks so that they don't communicate to the outside world. So, what I've done is I've taken a switch, and it's the same switch you might have seen me for my drive A B crossover、um, circuit I made in. The,、uh, on my other Atari、uh, ST, so I switched between drive A, which was the GoTech, and drive B, which was the external floppy, so that I can boot from the external floppy. And basically, if you look at the, the switch on the bottom, it's got three sets of、uh, contacts there, and the c e n t e r contact is always、uh, in circuit to either this side, these two, or these two. So that allows you to just basically、um, is it a double pole, double throw? Is that the one? You know, you know, you can figure that out. But have a look. If you're buying a switch, you want one with six, and it's basically making contact with either these two pins, this thing, and then switch it over and it makes these two pins on this selection. And it's the same on both sides. And they're two separate circuits. And then what I've got, I'll show you the board. I've got a power wire here, and I'll show you where that goes in a moment. But what I've done, this is、uh, where you might have to, I'm going to try to. Bring this up and hopefully we can focus on it. Come on, focus. And what I've done is cut the tracks there. So if you count the pins, you see pin 39 here, and work your way up, you've got these two、uh, chip enable pins effectively, like ROM 4 and ROM 3. And instead of going straight through, what I've done is I've cut them so that I could solder two sets of wires either way on either side.、Um, And if you were going to do it on a fresh board, so you take your fresh board here, I'll flip it over, and you're basically counting one, two, three, four, and you would just be literally cutting there and cutting there and just taking a chunk out there, leaving pads on this side, and obviously you've got nice big pads on that side to work with. And what that does, that has the、uh, effect of being able to switch out those. And I can probably show you in my little. Pad and my bit of paper. So, if you think of、uh, this switch, you've got your、uh, Atari、uh, ST here, and you've got this board. I'm going to show it kind of top for you here.、Um, so, if this is the ROM pins that I just showed you, ROM 3, and this will be ROM 4,、um, we've cut them so there's two sections, and this goes off to other parts of the circuitry inside. So, all we're doing really is we're just putting here. A switch. So that switch that I showed you will do both of these actuations at the same time. But you notice it's got a third leg, which I said goes to power. So what I've done here, though, I've just got a third leg here, and these two are wired up together, and these two go to the 5 volt pin. So what happens is when you switch that switch to a chunk, it goes from Closing the circuit this side over to 5 volts. And when you put 5 volts on the EEPROM chips on this side, it stops them from talking on the bus because they're enabled when it's low, not high. So it keeps them high. They don't talk. Your ST can get on with its other business without this interfering. Hence the stealthiness of it. As if 
it's not even turned on. So even if you have this as a diagnostic cartridge, you could still do the same mod and leave it plugged in all the time. And then when you need it, you want to do some diag, um, you can then just flip the switch and it's enabled. So what I've done is I've got a 3D printed case from Chrissy and I printed the wrong one. I printed the wrong one. I've since modified this. So you have the back office logo centralized here. So when you plug it into the ST, it's nice and centralized, but also it has a nice arrow here. It looks awesome. It's kind of a retro style and I'm waiting for the bottom to print up. So what I've done is I've trimmed this a little bit inside here. You can just see those features are trimmed slightly just because I have these wires on the outer edge. You know, you could put these wires elsewhere on board, to be honest with you, but here's the easiest because it's easiest to repair if you make a boo-boo, you know, and I often do. So what I'm doing is I'm just figuring out how to position the switch in here. So I'm pushing that back in and that fits nice how it's supposed to in the case. These are so much better than the original cases things on the Atari used to come with. And then what I need to do is figure out a way of mounting that. So I think that would be quite good there, which would be on the back basically. And if I can get that as close, I guess, to the PCB as possible. And I'm looking, I'm just doing it by eye. I'm saying the middle of that it should be good. So that does mean though, I got to cut into this a square hole, which is always a problem if you're messing with things like this. You want to get your square hole. So we're going to experiment a little bit. It would have been nice to 3D print it into the design. Sometimes there's a cheat as well. If you want to, you know you've got a, a lid part coming. You can just sometimes take a notch out of the edge like that and just put this so you slide it in from the side and then the lid will hold the bit. But I'd, I'd like it in the middle, a bit, bit more positive, a bit more designed in looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not going to mark it. I'm just going to make a hole the first hole and you can see there it's hopefully I'm just exactly doing it by eye <laughs> it went through my finger so there's your hole and I can see there looking up that is the dead center of the switch so I've got to work out there how to make this a the right size and uh, less square. So what I need to do now is turn this this way. So we know that's the hole for that position. Now we're gonna switch it that way and we can see we're gonna to need to make another hole. So if that is centered there, let me zoom in. Unfortunately, this is all black on black on black, which is always a bit difficult, but you can see the holes lining up there. That's good, that's real good. Okay, and then I'm gonna to try to keep it all not enough hands and I'm just going to make a little doink like that and I know that I know that's not a great mark but I know where it needs to be aligned on the vertical so that's fine and then we'll just drill that out as close as we can to it look at why doesn't that not it doesn't want to sit so I'm just holding the drill over the top sorry it's obscuring but uh Kind of value my finger at the minute so that's the first two holes so what i would then tend to do is get another drill bit um, and then just put that drill bit about the same so its diameter is the same as that of the width of the switch so you can see that's the width of the switch oh i think it's about five and a half um five and a half would do it Let's do it five and a half, just to, because it's going to be easier. If, if you want to do it more precision, go with five and then, you know, file it out, dremel it out, whatever you got. Oh no, I cracked my case. Curse you, PLA. Oh no. So I've actually got to repair that now. Let me glue that bloody thing back on now. And then I will continue the drilling. Darn thing. Chrissy, why didn't you design in my switch? It's too impatient to uh, glue that right now. So I just did the other hole. <laughs> and uh, it's not in a great place because it's all flexing and, and junk, but you can, uh, you can do that better. I'm just gonna continue and then patch this up. And then all, to, all you need to do really is once you get to this point, you just need to square off these radiuses and with print, 3D print, it's really easy. So just get you like a scalpel, small blade, just run it through. 
I mean, depending on your level of patience, you could probably do this from the start and just nibble it out. It really depends on what you're going for. If you want something very pretty, take your time. If you want something that's just going to be functional, you know, you can decide what your time is worth for that activity. I think I would have wanted to take more care on this had I printed the correct version of this box with the <laughs> new logo placement. But I, I do still want a functional box because I don't need a perfect box. I need I need to have a perfect box uh, design that looks nice and maybe I'll, I'll print one just to take a photo. But, you know, for me, I'm not a perfect kind of guy. Although, you know, I'd like to be, but let's be realistic here. We're on a, a time budget. Okay, so now I'm going to be a bit more cautious because it's flexing because I've got a crack in mine. I've got to glue it back. That layer delaminated. Depends on your infill. This took about just over two hours to print on a standard uh, model. Um, ooh, that's not bad. You now, obviously, went a bit awry on this side with the switch hole, but in terms of being a hole for a switch, that does the trick. So, what I'd advise with you for this, though, of course, is, and I can't show you because of the damage, is just to drill a couple of small holes and really fit it in with screws. Because once you fit this in, it's going to be really tricky to remove it if you sort of glue in that switch. Of course, you don't want to. You don't want to do that. And what's nice about this design, of course, is you can still get out the ROM chips, so you never really have to take the PCB out again if you don't want to. You can still get out the chips if you've got a chip puller. So I don't know. Hopefully, that's helpful to you if you're interested and you want uh, one of these. So you can experiment. Please see my back office show shop at www.backofficeshow.com, and we can get into all manner of switch related activities and who wouldn't want that thanks for watching Switch goes on, switch goes off, switch goes on, switch goes off, switch goes on, switch goes off, switch goes on, switch goes off. Switch goes on, switch goes off.